having to take this crankshaft pulley to work and let the machinist at work machine it uh, there was enough material to hold this in the jaws and it slipped out and put some scratches on the inside diameter there but it still had enough to center on he ended up making like a mandrel that would be held in the jaws of the chuck and then the pulley bolted it bolted to it with a pilot anyhow we got this board out and just a little bit taken off of the pulley it was actually fairly straight and uh, this has some play in it but my plan is to use some shim stock to center it and then I'll put some tack welds on I may have to make or buy another one of these and bore it out because uh, we were trying to do a press fit but when we were trying to press it this thing kind of bent over I flattened it some with a vise and hammer but I'm not so sure it still has some warp to it so I might have to work on that some more or end up buying a new one I was attempting to stick the pulley on um, using just one of the bolts and I realized I couldn't get the, the bolt to screw into the harmonic balancer there. I was like wow that's really weird and I took my phone and put down there in the bolt hole the bolt actually does not screw into the damper dampener it goes through and screws into a hub behind it that I had to start the car without the uh, pulley on it to move it out of the garage for something apparently that was a big no-no because there's nothing that holds that crankshaft balancer onto the engine when you take out those six bolts I, I thought like every other car I've ever seen, the giant bolt in the center of the crank held the held the balancer, but that's not true on these cars. The giant bolt in the center holds a small hub. I can't really see that that well. I mean, you won't be able to see the hub anyhow because it's behind the balancer. But the the big bolt just holds a balancer onto the end of the crankshaft, and then the or a small hub onto the end of the crankshaft the balancer just slipped over those washers and centers on that hub and then the six small bolts go through the pulley the balancer and screw into that hub so i sprayed a little oil on it because it was kind of stuck you know it's hard to see there's a lot of stuff in the way here but this thing is just it's loose now, as you can see. All right, we got the wheel tacked on as close to the weights as I could get it. And it's just being held in four tack welds. And that's probably all I'm going to put on it. <clears throat> it's Decently straight, I did my best just with some calipers, but probably gonna have to take it back to the machinist at work to mount it in that mandrel he made, and we can uh, get it a little more straight just by tapping it with a hammer a little bit to get all the teeth straight, and then take a light cut off the diameter just to true it up. To the axi. Went ahead and stuck it back on the car with just a couple bolts. Just to kind of see what it looks like. We'll go down below.
All right, we're down below. You can see, I'm trying to hold this camera. Pretty difficult. There's the trigger wheel. There's this bracket here. There's quite a bit of distance between the two. Maybe two inches here. I got a stack of sensors. I think this one for like a Jeep or uh, I think this basically goes on any of the uh, Chrysler products. It goes uh, typically, I think it goes kind of on the bell housing bolts or something like that. It reads a wheel that's on the uh, flywheel or something. But uh, sticking it up here, quite difficult to do with one hand. So bear with me. Anyhow, maybe something kind of like that. Probably remake this bracket. It's got a little bit of a stamping to it. I'm sure that adds some strength, but I'll just make it flat and kind of have it extend. You know, up and over to this area. And then we'll probably put the sensor basically like that. It's pretty hard to uh, show this up under the car. Got some other sensors. I think was There's this little guy. He's pretty small. I can maybe make an L bracket that kind of maybe uh Holds it like that. Once again, it's real hard to show this. But yeah. Maybe something like that. I require making more, kind of like the Jeep sensor. And I also got some, I got some VR type sensors as well. This one. Yeah. This is a uh, variable reluctance sensor. So it has the two pins. A little bit different type of sensor. It's more prone to uh, interference. Things like uh, run out and teeth geometry matters more with it. So I'd rather not use the style. I'd probably have to mount it this way. That looks pretty good there. I might consider doing that. This 
thing won't really focus. There. So that could work pretty good. You can almost just make a bracket. Comes up, holds that there. Not sure. I wish this was available in a a hall type sensor. But we will see. I'm gonna take this back off to get to work. Get it straightened up. And I'll uh, mount it. And I'll figure out where this uh, balancer needs to be on the crankshaft again since I kind of messed that up. And then figure out how to try to mount this guy. I'll probably test it actually on my lathe before I stick it back on the car. Just make sure it's able to trigger on that tooth pattern before I get too far along. Alright, I thought I'd show kind of how this works. I just have the sensor there. There's a gap. Kind of hard to see. Not much of a gap, but there is a gap. Then I have a little handheld oscilloscope. Kind of a piece of junk, but it's nice. And the fact that it's small. <clears throat> I have uh, 5 volts here ground in the center and then the signal output is this uh, red one over here there's a I think that's a 10k let's see one yeah 10k uh, pull up resistor to 5 volts so how it works is when this does not see metal so yeah, when the sensor is normally open between uh, signal and ground so the resistor will pull that pin up to 5 volts and then when it sees metal it closes so basically it shorts out the signal to ground and pulls the signal low so if I turn this real slow there it is. it's hard with the run out so I haven't uh, done anything about that yet. There we go. I think we got it. If I turn the lathe on, hopefully it doesn't crash into it. Probably help if I put it in gear. fixed first and try again I know 
the challenge is going to be getting the sensor you know, mounted on the car where it's actually going to read this little pattern. It's pretty small. Alright, I figured I'd show this other sensor. This is the VR variable reluctance sensor. It's only two wires, which is kind of nice. You don't have to run a power wire to it. It produces its own signal. Um, like I said, it's a, the uh, voltage output will change based on uh, air gap and how centered it is on the tooth. But I thought I'd give it a shot. I think I have it where it's not going to hit. And this will produce an AC signal. Let me turn it on and see. Hopefully it doesn't hit. sensor is going to work after I um, true up these teeth because of the the geometry they got going on here at the missing tooth I'm not really sure why they do that it's a very weird pattern I would prefer it just to be cut down all the way Maybe I'll have the machines that work do that. Just make it a regular missing tooth. <clears throat> well, that's that. Hopefully I'll have another video up soon. Thanks.